Hello again guys, we are here in 14.7 applying coordinate geometry. So first we want to talk about um, when we put geometric shapes onto a coordinate plane. Here we have an xy axis because we're only in two dimensions. Uh, it's easiest to put them somewhere along an axis if possible. You notice figure one is not touching either axis. So check out this statement down here talking about how um, it kind of complicates things. So here we go, a little bit of color coding to help you see this. Um, figure two, our midpoints, we have to have our midpoints based off the distance between P and R, so that's why we're averaging things down here because it's dealing with distance. Um, and in figure one, you'll see every single point has its own unique variable name. So we have six different variables there compared to only three needed in figure two. And actually we still use three variables here, but figure three is the easiest to work with because every single vertex lies on um, an axis somewhere. Then so you can read the rest of the bottom down here. So work through problem one until you get to the got it. Go ahead, and try it on your own, but then come back to the video if you get confused or to check your answer. So if we're trying to find the coordinates of rectangle RECT, and we know it has a height of A and a length of 2B, I know the length from R to T and from E to C is 2B, so half of that in the middle would just be B, so I know they are both B away from our zero point on the Y axis. So that tells me something about the Y value, or the um, X values for R and E are both B away, and the C, or the X values for C and T are both B away, and E and C are both up with a Y value of A. So as I look at my points, point R is at negative B zero, because it is sitting on the x-axis, it has no y value. E, up above it, has negative b a. C is positive b, positive a. And b is just, or t is b zero. If you have yet to do so, go ahead and try b. Get the um, values at each of the points. All right, so since I know that i e is 2a, and the x-axis bisects IE. I know it gets cut in half, so they're both equidistant apart. So they will both be A away, and they are on the y-axis. So they have, ah, this is backwards. Because I'm told that the distance between K and O is B, I know that this is at negative B zero. And then T, I'm told OT is C. So similarly, I'm at C zero. And here are your answers, if you could not tell, for both A and B. Try numbers one and two on your own and then come back to check your answers. All right, so in number one here, we're told that S is A units away from the origin. So that tells me what my Y value is. And because it's still sitting on the Y axis, I have an X value of zero. Now to get to T, we know that we have a parallelogram, but we don't really know anything about the length of the parallelogram. So we can just choose a variable. So we can choose C and say that it's C units away from the axis, but still A units up, because we know the height is still the same as S. Z is B units from the origin, so that tells me the X value, and it has no Y value because it's sitting on the X axis. And then to get to W, we have to combine the B segment and our length of C, because I know this is a parallelogram, my lengths will be the same. <clears throat> so W then becomes B plus C zero. Try number two if you have yet to do so. So we see for number two that it's an isosceles trapezoid. So we know um, about the distances and the angles and things being parallel. So it's centered at the origin with a base of 2a. So I know that s and z are both going to be a away from the origin with a y value of 0. And then or is a length of c. So r has a y value of c with an x value of 0. And since we don't know t or w's distance away from the y-axis, we can invent that and we just call that a length of B. All right, go ahead and work through problem two until you get to the got it. Um, then try the got it, come back to check your answer. This image right here is the shape from problem two. All right, so in part A, we have this um, parallelogram that we know the B coordinates are 2A plus 2B because the base of the parallelogram is a length of 2A and this C um, point up here is 2B away from the axis. So we have to span this distance 
and the distance of the parallelogram to get to that x coordinate. All right, in part B, we want to check if the trapezoid is isosceles. So to do that, we want to compare the lengths of RT and AP. And we do that by utilizing the distance formula since it is a diagonal line. So you can see right there the math that goes behind to support that. The distances are, in fact, equivalent, which means it is an isosceles trapezoid. All right, for number three here, go ahead and pause the video, try this. You want to not use the distance formula. Not only would it take you a long time if you use the distance formula for this whole thing, uh, but there's another way that we can determine whether this is a um, parallelogram or not and whether it's a rhombus. So it says it is a parallelogram. We want to check, is it a rhombus? So here to determine if something is a rhombus, the easiest thing to do is check the slopes of the diagonals and compare them to each other. Because we know if it's a rhombus, that the slopes of the diagonals will be perpendicular. So we check the slope of AC, which that is from negative A, positive A, to positive A, negative A. And again, it's rise over run, so we have a rise of negative 2A and a run of positive 2A. And then the slope of BD is a positive one, so we know that this is a perpendicular intersection, so the diagonals must be perpendicular, so it must be a rhombus. So now we're going to learn about using a coordinate proof. So work through problem three, which shows you how to write a plan for coordinate proof, and then we're going to come here to the got it and plan out a coordinate proof for the triangle mid-segment theorem. All right, the easiest way to place a triangle on the coordinate plane to prove the triangle mid-segment theorem is figure three from our uh, first slide that we had here comparing how we name these points and how we know their locations. So if that helps you, then go ahead and continue on with your proof. All right, so once we have this triangle on the coordinate grid, what we know is that M and N are the midpoints of these two sides. So we want to use the midpoint formula to find their coordinates. So then we could find the slope of M, N to determine if it is parallel to our base. And then finally, we can use the distance formula to check that M, N is in fact half the length of P, R. Go ahead and try number four on your own and then come back if you need help or to check your answer. All right, this color coding should help you a little bit with trying to name the coordinates of T, R, A, P, the isosceles trapezoid here. So go ahead and come back when you think you have all your coordinates. All right, since we know that EG is 2C up, then I know that the Y values for both R and A will be 2C. And since the top base length is 4B, I go 2B to the left and 2B to the right because it says the Y axis bisects the bases. And then likewise on the bottom here, I know that the bottom base is 4A, so I go 2A to the left, 2A to the right, and they have a Y value of zero. All right, so, <clears throat> For part B, we want to write given and prove statements, so it's um, easy to know that we are talking about an isosceles trapezoid, we have parallel sides, and we know midpoints because we've been told all that. We would like to prove that it is, or that the uh, structure made by the midpoints is a rhombus. So how could we do this? How can we find out where those locations are? Well, we easily use the midpoint formula to find the average of everything here. So, I mean, I could go through all the points, but you guys can figure that out. And then for D, how will we determine if it is a rhombus? Well, the easiest rule for a rhombus that we can prove is going to be that the um, sides are all congruent. Go ahead, try five, six, and seven on your own. So pause the video. So we're looking to find the coordinates of K and M, and all I know is that OM is 2A, and then I'm given this other coordinate, but this other coordinate tells me everything else I need to know. Since I know that OM is 2A, and to get to L, I need to just go the extra amount that was in this distance over here. I know that this distance must be 2B. Similarly, I know that it has a vertical distance off the x-axis of C, so that K, I know, has a Y value of C as well. So we get a K point of 2B comma C and M value of 2A zero. So to find the slopes of the diagonals of KLMN, I've got my lines here now shown, so all I need to do is find the rise over run for k to m and then o to l. So for k to m, my rise is c, really more so a negative c, um, and then my run is 2b minus 2a, slope of ol you can see there. 
All right, then to find the coordinates of the point of intersection here, we wanna think about what it would be if we look at the entire shape because that's in the dead center. So we have a or 2a plus 2b for the entire distance across. So to find half of that way, we're gonna to have to half it. And same thing with the height of c, we would have to half that. So my point of intersection becomes a plus b for the x value, c divided by two for the y value. That is all that I have for you guys today. So please make sure everything makes sense. Let me know if it does not, and I will see you guys in class. Have a terrific day.